<clears throat> Hello everyone. You're welcome to my English literature tutorials. Today I am going to take a very small poem written by William Wordsworth. It's not the brevity of the poem, the shortness of the poem that interests me here. It is one particular line that comes towards the end of the poem that attracts me today. And the line is, the child is the father of men. And when I read this line, you can tell me what the poem is. Yes, it is the poem, my heart leaps up when I behold. This line, the child is the father of men, is an example of paradox. I have seen in many examinations this question is raised and the students are asked to explain the paradox underlying the line, the child is the father of men. So today's tutorial will try to uh, explain how this line is paradoxical and what is the underlying meaning this line carries. But before we go into that line, we need to know what the poem is. Let me read this poem for you aloud. My heart leaps up. My heart leaps up when I behold a rainbow in the sky. So was it when my life began. So is it now. I am a man. So be it when I shall grow old or let me die. The child is the father of men. And I could wish my days to be born each to each by natural piety. Now, what is this poem uh, trying to say in the first place? The poem is a reflection of the poet about his past life, a realization of the present, and a prophecy about his future. It believes that what we carry from our childhood matures into our manhood, and we carry the same when we go to our grave or to our old days. The poet first recalls his childhood days and says that when he was a child, he grew up in such an environment that he could see rainbows coming in the sky and he was taught to appreciate the beauty of the rainbow. So whenever he saw rainbows as a child, his heart leaped up, that is, with happiness, with enthusiasm. His heart used to be extremely happy. My heart leaps up when I behold the rainbow in the sky. And the trend has continued ever since. It was not just in the past. This experience has continued and lasted even today. When is a man? Even today, although he is involved in a number of activities and codes and duties and responsibilities as a man, as a father, as a friend, as a salaryman, as a work holder, as a poet, still he has retained this realization that when there is a rainbow in the sky, his heart leaps up. So was it when my life began, means it was the same when I was a small child, so is it now, I am a man. And the same is true today when I have become, you know, a mid middle-aged man. So to be it, when I shall grow old, means he is hoping that the same will continue, that is, he shall continue to love the rainbow when he is an old man or when he dies. And here he says, the child is the father of men. And I could wish my days to be bound to each by natural piety. So standing in the middle of his life as a middle-aged man, he hopes that in the days to come, tomorrow, day after, after 10 years, after 20 years, or till the time he, he breathes his last, all his days, this day, another day, another day, another day, will be connected, will be bound by purity. Natural piety means the feeling of purity, a very religious, a spiritual feeling about nature because he has always uh, seen nature as a spiritual entity, something that strikes the strings of joy 
inside his heart and he has ever since retained that. So he hopes that in the days to come also as they are true today, as they were true in the past, his days will all be very pure in his feelings about nature. Because, and here comes the paradox, because the child is father of the man. Now in the first place, why is this a paradox? Because we believed that the man is the father of the child. This is what we believe. The man, that is the grown-up individual, the man is the father of the child. This is how we believe normally. So when this normal belief is subverted, we get a paradox. The child is the father of men. When we were expected to say, the man is the child. I mean, the man is the father of the child. So, what is the paradox? That is the paradox. And what's the meaning of the paradox? How is this child the father of the man? In this line, the most interesting word is the father. When we say father here, we should not understand a grown-up individual, a male that gives birth to a child. This is a very conventional thinking about fatherhood. Here, the word father should not be limited to its conventional meaning of an adult man who gives birth to a child. But here, father should be understood as the root, the seed. The seed grows up into the adult tree. The seed is the child. So that seed is the father. Fathering, father, the potentiality of giving birth, the potentiality of growing is what is father here. So the father, that is the seed, comes first. And child is the seed of fatherhood. Child grows up into fatherhood. It's the same individual you have to think that. When we say the child is the father of men, don't think of like two individuals. The same individual first becomes a child that is the root, the seed, and the same individual grows up into a man. The same individual grows up into the man. And what is the trend? The food you give to the child, the culturing you give to the child, the books you teach to the child, the doctrines you teach to the child, the ways you teach to the child, the inspiration you give to the child, that determines what kind of manhood he will have. So the child or the childhood determines manhood. The child is the father of man. That is, the child is what determines what kind of manhood you are going to have when you grow. The child is father of man. The child determines the type of the man. So what is the point trying to say here is childhood is extremely crucial. So how is that related with the poem? He's talking about how his heart genuinely loves a rainbow. Today, it is because long ago when he was a child, he was taught to appreciate the rainbow. Who He grew in the middle of uh, the lake district where the rustic people, his people, grew up enjoying the rainbow because these people had very intimate relation with nature they determined their life with the cycle of the nature where rainbow came in as surprise at times so this rainbow in the sky was his first joy primordial joy his juvenile joy and what did that do to his heart it permanently changed his heart. His heart was gradually filled by love for nature. And that is a primary thing. Because if you can love nature, you can love trees, you can love animals, you can love the stars and the moon and the sun. And that teaches you how to love. That gives you magnanimity. You become compassionate. And by that token, you cannot, you cannot hurt anybody. So this, this culturing of love, compassion, 
sympathy, empathy, brotherhood, and humanity that started in the childhood, it lasts in manhood and continues to, to the grave. And by the time this very particular man goes to the grave, he is still the same good man, the same pious man, the same religious man, the same spiritual man, the same man of philanthropy, love, compassion. So that is it. So when we say the child is the father of men, we mean the childhood determines manhood. And if our childhood is good, our manhood has the likelihood of being good. And if manhood is good, your always and dad is good. This is all for today. I hope you have cleared your confusions. Thank you very much.